Hi, Gert Walter here. I just wanted to show you how I mounted my Minn Kota Altera Riptide. It's a saltwater motor and I had to make some modifications to my boat because I have a high bow railing and I wanted to keep the bow railing strong but still allow the motor to deploy. So I'll show you a couple of modifications I made on the boat, not on the motor itself. So I have a 20 foot center console and this 24 volt Minn Kota is great. I fish the rocks, I fish for striper, I have to get right up in the rocks and the autopilot on this at night really is, is wonderful. Um, but to get out there sometimes I have to travel eight, nine miles in, in three, four foot waves. So the first modification I made is I use this ram mount here mounted to the railing. You can see it's this gets loosened and the ball on the shaft stays there. This comes off and just stays like this when I'm fishing. Stays out of the way. Just have to tighten it a little bit. And the ball is set so that it's not in the way of anything. And most importantly down here, this belt that drives the trim up and down, slides right through the ball. You can see that little gap right in there. It doesn't pinch at all. The next modification I made is cutting the bow railing here. You can see the bow railing comes along, it's quite high. Um, once the grandkids come along, I want to have this be strong. So if they're sitting up here, and if I had it cut, you could see how there's some flexibility in there. So I had it mounted, I figured out exactly how wide the shaft has to be. And I've set up a system here to ensure that when I'm traveling and not using the motor, i.e. not fishing, then the bow railing still nice and strong and intact and actually looks pretty good considering what I did to it. So that's what it looks like with the piece in there. You can see I cut the bow railing. Now I've added this piece of right here steel and I drilled a couple holes. There's some pins in there. I made some gimp, tied it around the shaft and then it goes underneath to hold this piece in because if I'm, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm out in the middle of the water and I take that piece off, I certainly don't want it to uh, fall into the water. So this is nice and stable, it can travel like this. These pins here seem to rust pretty easily after a season in the salt water, so I'll just have to grease them a little bit. So first thing I do is I pull this one out. So this is now loose. This bar here is very tight on the railing, but this pin's still holding it in place. It comes off like that. I pull this one out. The piece can either be put down here and locked in place again or which is usually the best because otherwise if it swings around it's just has more of a chance of breaking the gimp and coming off. So when the motor when the motor deploys it only goes down part way it just barely goes into the water but it obviously can go much deeper here but if I'm in shallow water I may not want to go that deep so I have total control over the the um, how deep it goes. I'm going to stop it right above the tire. Now back up to sort of the neutral mode. I can get it even up higher if I want to pull it out of the water, if I want to move a short distance. I'm going to, um, now I'm going to stow it. It does it all automatically. Now it's locked in place. I just have to close up the ram mount here and I'm good to go in, in nice, you know, in deep waves and this motor is very stable. I've cut the gap here perfectly so that the shaft goes through this, but it doesn't hit either side. I want to have it as narrow as possible. I'm going to just deploy it again here for one second. So the other thing is when this goes all the way down, the ram mount up in here is still right above this. That's why I've, where I've set it so it doesn't interfere with the railing. I really like this motor. It self deploys, it self um, stows. So I can be in the back of the boat fishing and then uh, take the motor up and down. I can make the trim go up and down. The other thing, it has a memory in it, so following a GPS. So if I have a track along a shore that I like, I, st I store that and then it can just, uh, next time I can click on that and depending on the tide, obviously, I can follow that track. So it's really a very useful motor. It seems to be very solidly built for salt water. And of course, you can use it in fresh water also show you a couple of other things here. Here's another little modification I made. I just put this 
the lock over here so that the, the cord, when it's actually plugged in, runs around the side of the boat so it's less of a tripping hazard if I'm up front using the platform here to fish on. And I also had to modify a plate underneath it because of the lip of the rub rail. Here's a modification I made to lift it above the rub rail. By the way, this right here is where the old bow light was in. I filled that in with epoxy, a little bit of gel coat on it. These are the wires that run to the, the uh, running lights. This plate here is the one that the Minn Kota sits on. There's a handle right here that slips into the side of this and holds it in place. There's a little bolt under here where you can either put a cotter pin through or you can put a lock in. Seems quite secure. This aluminum plate here you can see how I modified it just so that the plastic plate sits above the bow rail. Everything's flush here. I had access to it underneath the hold. Could get in there although it was still a little bit awkward. So now it mounts flush because that's really critical. You don't want to have the thing sitting angled up or down. You can see from underneath here the motor is off. I'm just ready to take it off the boat and that's how the ram mount is on there. And this thing is bulletproof and rock solid even when I'm hitting waves at a decent speed, three or four feet high. I didn't really want it to torque that mount that's over there. So I have it secured in both ends, both the base and with the ram mount right up near the top there. Good fishing.